Hey guys, today the main participants of the video will be the maggot. Let's try to raise flies and observe this process. At the same time, we will compare adult insects grown from red and white fly larvae. Even in a petri dish, you can see how different they are. The larvae are always active, looking for food, obviously not willing to sit in one place. Actually, we need flies not for nothing, but to diversify the diet of our praying mantis. In winter, all insects are dormant. Why buy live food when you can grow it yourself? Now the mantis eats maggot, and soon it will eat fresh flies. Let's go back to the fly larvae. We prepared a flask like this, which previously held a syringe needle, and also some other vessels, a test tube, a petri dish, and a large flask. We want to see how the change in the maggot's habitat from cramped to spacious affects the process of larval development and the formation of the fly itself. We put the white maggot into the first container, where there is so little space that it cannot even turn around, only crawl forward or backward. The next tube has more space, but the range of movement is also very limited. There's no room at all for a fly to be born. In a petri dish and in a large container, the fly has a lot of space, but the fly will not be able to fly everywhere. We will soon find out if this affects the development of the wings. Backstage, we also placed the red maggot in different containers. Only in the large container, the larvae will be neighbors. The others have individual apartments, or almost apartments. 24 hours have passed, and we can see the first results. In the petri dishes, one pupa is still a little red, the one that was red from the beginning, and the other one, which was white, has turned brown. In the test tube, it's 50 fiftieths. It's already frozen, but not yet pupated. In a large container at the red, you can see a small movement trying to get comfortable to wake up a fly already. In small tubes, there is no change in general. The larvae are still as active and do not want to go to bed. It's interesting when both don't sleep. It's a pattern. The smaller the space, the later the larva becomes a pupa. In the small ones, neither sleeps. In the larger ones, it is 50 fiftieths, and in the larger ones, pupae have already formed. The third day was without change, and only on the fourth day, the fly larvae in the smallest containers pupated, two days late. Pupae also differ in color from those that started metamorphosis earlier. By the way, the color of the pupa, it is now all the same brown, regardless of what the maggot was, red or white. Day five didn't look good. Day six, too, almost. We noticed a small change. A larva in a petri dish stuck its head out. It got cramped and decided to get out, but it did not move, it just stuck its head out and that was it. In small tubes, no changes. In larger tubes, also silence. But two pupae in a large container have guests. You can see how small they are in comparison with the larvae. That's why the maggot is pupated, so that no microorganisms can disturb its sleep. The next day, the fly has already left the cocoon, lying on its back, not knowing what to do. We went into the hangars and saw the fly coming out of its shell. We didn't have enough time to film the process. This is our first birth. We still have time to film everything in detail. For now, it's upside down, wriggling. The funny thing is that the head of the fly is white after birth, which you can see especially well in these shots. And by the way, the fly could not turn around. But it wrapped its legs around its larva and turned it around. The fly is white not only on the head, but almost all over the body. It seems that it is not white at all, but gray. The wings are not formed, they are transparent. 
Against this background, the large red eyes stand out strongly as does the proboscis which seems to be already formed. And now we finally get to see the birth of a fly. We can see the process from all angles. It has stuck its head out and is now trying to get rid of the cocoon. It helps itself with its legs and body contraction. It's stretching out, and then it's like it's sucking in its belly, trying its best to come into the world. There's no midwife here and no one can help. Now let's watch the fly grow. Here we have time-lapse footage of the first hour of its life. You can see the wings growing and then the fly grows in size and changes color from pale pink to black. And another fly we captured in time-lapse, its transformation from newborn to adult. Only at one point did the fly turn itself upside down and decide to show off its changes with its belly up. How does a fly manage to nearly double in size in such a short time? By the way, these were both flies born in the big jar. One was born yesterday, the other about an hour ago. But there is no visual difference between them. At least we can't see them. Another birth, this time the smallest. Once again, the fly has left its cocoon in a matter of minutes. The fly has just been born and it's already trying to crawl out of its cocoon. The plastic cocoon will be insurmountable. Let's see if the fly can develop as quickly in a small space as it can in a larger one. The first hour of time lapse has passed and the fly has not changed. Also, after four hours, we have not seen any significant growth. Unfortunately, not all of the births in this story were successful. For example, a fly in a petri dish that developed from a red maggot was unable to complete its birth. The fly tried to climb out and was about 80% complete. Unfortunately, in such a case, you cannot be born half or a little more. This was not the only case. Here is another fly in a small test tube that has been trying to get out for half a day, also from a red maggot. Such a pattern. We even cut the flask to get the fly out. There are literally millimeters left to get rid of the cocoon, but it can't finish what it started. It's a bit of a strange situation. How do you come all this way? Turn into a chrysalis, develop into an insect, give birth, crawl out with almost your whole body, and get stuck with your ass. You can see that even the body is already blackened, not as white as a newborn. It turns out that it is necessary to leave the cocoon quickly, otherwise the body begins to develop and the fly risks being blocked. Or maybe it's nature's way of getting rid of weak and slow flies. We thought that the color of the fly larva influences, but one of the white-colored larvae could not be born at all. This one is a little bigger than the others, more round. Obviously, the fly started to develop inside, but it could not even chew through the cocoon. So it's been a week. Everyone who wanted to be born has been born. Let's take a look at the results. The flies in the largest tank are very active. They are running up and down all over the surface. They're even trying to fly. As soon as we open the lid, they immediately spread their wings and left their home. Next is the test tube fly. Here, the house is smaller, and you can clearly see from the products of life that it has been here for more than a day. The most interesting thing is that we didn't feed it, but it still went about its business. Veroyatno probably leftovers from a past life when she was a larva. The fly is as active as its brethren born in a large container. We opened the test tube and released the fly. It didn't immediately want to get out, let alone fly away. It has wings, but no flight experience. It can jump and flap its wings a little, but to no avail. 
We put it in a large container and waited. The fly got so used to the walls of the test tube always being close to it that it never even learned to turn around. Literally, by the second day, the fly was feeling pretty good. It climbed all over the glass, on the walls, and upside down. The moment of truth was here. Open the lid. Can it fly away or not? She's in no hurry to leave. She likes her new bigger home, too. Well, let's give her a hand. This time, when we tried to touch the fly, it flew away and we never saw it again. And now for the most interesting fly that grew in the smallest flask. We let the fly out and watched it. For a week it got so used to it that it could grab all the walls with its legs. But now there is no such possibility. You can see from the body, from the wings, from the head, that the fly was never able to develop into a full-fledged insect in a very narrow space. After a day, the fly adapted to the new conditions, but it was never able to transform into a full-fledged fly. Now we know how the environment affects the development of living organisms. With that philosophical thought, I think we'll call it a day. Bye-bye.